on this computer. Okay, hi there. I am actually redoing my intro because I wanted to record onto my desktop, not the cloud. So, redid that, and we're and we haven't started. You haven't missed anything if you're watching the replay. We were just doing introductions. So Jeff, Carol, Joanne, and Greg are with us today. We're going to be going over the Calm Guide to Launching Your Money Network, which is a new resource in the Find Calm Here community. I'm going to be sharing my screen to go over this with you. I'm just going to do the intro. Uh, does everybody see my screen? Just confirm yeah. with me there. Thumbs up. So just to for notification again for everybody who's uh, in the community, whether you're in the community um, currently or we're not, just so that you know how to get to this section. Um, recently, I changed from the community plan to the business plan, which just means that I get these additional tabs on the left side. And um, so I am calling this a resource. So all of my courses are actually going to be called guides, but they're going to be in this resource section. And what my envisionment of this is, is that these are guides that are going to help um, community builders in all different aspects of the journey of a community building your online community. So um, right now we're starting with launch. You got to start somewhere. You have to like build and launch the community. So that's where we're starting. And then um, in our Mighty Mastermind last week, um, uh, Carol was attending uh, the onboarding members guide, which is going to be, I have section one done and I'm going to be working on the following sections um, that we're going to be discussing during our monthly Mighty Mastermind sessions. Um, so um, that guide is, is starting there, but it'll have more um, sections to it. The guide was a, a concept basically because one, and Stacy, who I wish was here, <laughs> I wanted to thank Stacy because she kind of inspired this in a way. She was asking me um, how I work with clients, my consulting clients, and I said, well, I have a form and I ask them a bunch of questions to get some information from them. And the questions that I was asking, I sent her the, the questions and she said, well, I don't necessarily know all the answers and I don't really want to answer all these questions right now. Like, can, is there a way you can make this faster and easier for me? And so that basically came down to me creating a, a series of agreements where you have a, what I'm calling a calm flow. And so we'll go into that, but that's kind of what, what I realized when I was presenting the, the Calm Flow a couple weeks ago to a few people in the Find Calm Here community, they told me that there was more framework that was needed uh, to go around this to kind of explain what we're doing, which is what the Calm Guide is. So who would this is for? Um, people who want to launch a money network, but they are not sure where to start. Um, or if you've already launched a money network, but maybe you didn't have a plan or a structure, and so now you're actually wanting to relaunch and maybe have a little bit more clear plan or structure around what you're doing. The, um, the guide um, is structured based on feedback from everybody, and this is the first version, and so this workshop is meant for me to get some feedback from you so that I know what's helpful or if there's something missing that I need to add a missing component or something's not clear so that I can make sure I get more clear. Or if a section's like redundant, then I can just remove that if it sounds like this is something you already know. Sometimes a little, I'm a little redundant. Okay. This is just talking about, I do have a section in the um, community that shows you, or I'm sorry, in the guide, that's the activity feed. And that gives you the opportunity to like share, obviously this is a new resource, so there's not much in there right now, but this gives you an opportunity to share like your worksheets. If you filled them out, you could like print this out, type, you know, you could write the PDFs of this like worksheet, and then you could actually upload it here in the activity feed. Um, or you can share pictures or anything else you want to share there um, in, in, in reference to the course. Um, so I do have that set up. And then there is a Calm Flow chart, which just is basically explaining how we're going to, through the steps, show you how to launch your money network. And so the first section is going to be um, setting up your money network for success. And this section is just going over, it's more strategy. It's not tech stuff as much as it's strategy of who you're bringing together, why they're coming together, what is the reason, like what are they gonna accomplish together? And, how, and as a host, uh, most people, and what I learned yesterday actually, I was talking with somebody from uh, Turkey, from Istanbul, I think it was Istanbul. I met him in a Slack channel through, a commun for, through the CMX channel, uh, which is a community management um, Slack community. 
and he is a consultant. He actually worked for Google for a long time. He's got a lot of um, experience in the community industry, and he's a consultant. And I said, um, would you have time to talk with me? And he said, sure. And so basically what he told me was, with our conversation, he's like, well, I don't know how to launch a paid network, but it sounds like you do. And so that should be your key focus for when you're consulting and you're talking to people, you're talking to them about a paid community. Um, because that's different than like what businesses typically see as a community they're seeing as a free place for people to come versus a paid community where people are investing money um, and so that's kind of where i'm really going to focus on a paid community so when we're talking everything we're talking about during this session is all increasing you know getting people to pay for your network and how much you want to have as a host and those um those worksheets are in each section so like I have step one is to identify what the pl payment plan is gonna make a great experience for your members and also for your revenue. So if your goal is to have X amount of dollars per month, then you wanna make sure that you look at who you're inviting, how much you have to charge, how, what's the time frame that they're gonna be here. And I have some like, um, prompts here for you to help like here's clarity who you're being bringing together awareness um, what do you want to experience or feel for your first launch like what is that what do you want it to feel like um, are you going to be excited about it do you are you going to be stressed and overwhelmed obviously that's not what you want to feel um, and then what do you need to know now versus what you can put on the shelf for later because sometimes we feel like we have to know everything but then realizing, oh, okay, there's some things that I don't necessarily need to know right now. And then I have a worksheet that I break out some of these questions. Um, and the two options here that I was primarily starting with is um, if you want to invite a small group of people to either teach a course or offer a self-study program on a specific date, so it's date-focused, with instruction focused. And then the option B is I wanna uh, invite subscribers who would be paying a monthly or yearly subscription to be in my membership community. And so those are the different types of structures that I actually start with to think about that because what happens is when you build a, a community on the money networks, as soon as you have all this established, everything else becomes really easy. But what happens is people get into the, how do I create a plan and what do I do here? And they start with all the other, the techie kind of stuff. And then it gets people stuck a lot of the times is what I've learned. So I'd like to just get this down first, the strategy component. So you're already set from the very beginning of what you want to do. Um, I'm going to pause here and see if there's questions uh, regards to this first um, section or worksheet. Or any comments or anything you thought. Thoughts? I mean, I'll, I'll share with, yeah, my, my attempt at, at launching was nothing, wasn't cl even close to calm. So um, to, to be able to do something, you know, in, in, a, in a framework that is slow and progressive, allows me to build confidence and confidence, um, I'm like all in with that. Um, as mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, I, I will not, you know, they say have that big, hairy, audacious goal and like, dude, go for it and just get, yeah. it's like, shut up, just shut up. Um, for me, that, that put me, that thwarted all progress being so focused on that, um, that goal all the time. It was, it was not good advice for my brain. So this I like. So slow and steady is a good and even Jeff I know that you're talking about um, charging for people Jeff's a fitness instructor for anybody how do you title yourself if that's not correct coach coach yeah, you know, um, a strength strength there you yeah. go <laughs> um, and your your strategy for your community is going to be um, you're actually going to charge them as far as like with it's a package with your clients what they already get with you yeah, I'm going to have, it'll be like a mastermind or a group, group coaching, um, you know, I'll have a podcast and then, um, I want to continue the conversation from the podcast and from the group coaching into the community. 
because I mean, some people will, you know, communicate like this and others won't, um, mm -hmm. you know, but they'll go and kind of, you know, hit the keyboard and, and it's just, so again, just to engage, engage that way, be very active within there. Just like I've seen some Facebook groups, you know, in the fitness space. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this really goes over, um, so this first starts, um, and I know that I, I saw uh, Samir come on, but then it looks like he popped off. But he put in here, he filled out the worksheet, but then he put his comments in this section below where he listed out like what he's gonna do, invite a small group of people, um, what are the goals for that, for that group, the dates, and so he put everything in there um, like of his specifics for what his launch is. Um, so that's going to be helpful for that. Um, I will show you, so the second step is to setting up a plan. And this just really goes into, so that you can have something right away to invite people in without having to worry about, I have to spend a whole lot of time building a lot of content. Because like to Jeff's point, you want to just get people in the door. And so what I explain is, and in the, in the next step, we talk about like the doorway of like, how do you invite them in? So the doorway, when I'm talking about it in an online perspective, is your Money Network landing page. And when we go into the details of that, it's talking about, and we get into this a little bit more in the second section, but it's about how you bring those people in based on what you know about them. Um, if you know that they're mobile users, there's a certain way you can invite them in. If you know that you're going to connect with them on a desktop app more than, a mo more than mobile devices, those are different experiences. But this goes over payment plans, and here's a, the other part of the structure. So once in the first section, step one, we identified uh, if you're doing either a course or if you're doing a community membership. So those are the two dif different things. And then the, the step two here is talking about how are you charging for that? Are you charging it as a one-time payment or are you charging it as a reoccurring payment? So a course, like Carol had a course, she charged, I think you had a one-time payment for that course, right? Right. Yeah. So you had a one-time payment, um, but then, and people try to want to do all of these things at once. Like they want to have the one-time payment for the course, but then they also want them to have a subscription. And I feel like, it's either for your first launch, it's either one or the other. Like you either decide from the very beginning, I'm gonna charge $5.99 for the course, it's a five week course and that's how much it's gonna be and they have access to the membership and then we'll decide what to do after that, after that five weeks. Um, because it'll get confusing if you're trying to figure out two different scenarios around payments versus like just keeping it simple for yourself and for the members to have like one option like Either they're going to be a monthly payment or a, you know, like a subscription, either monthly or annual, or they're a one-time payment. So this worksheet kind of just breaks that down a little bit more for you. Um, again, we're getting clear on that big purpose that we did with the Community Design Masterclass. So some people, um, I know Greg doesn't know what I'm talking about right now, but um, all of us have taken um, besides Greg, has taken the community design masterclass and that basically talks about how you, you customize your big purpose, meaning why you're bringing people together. And so that's the statement there. I bring people, who do you bring together? Why do they need your help? What are they gonna learn, do or practice with your help? Um, and so that they can ch and achieve a desired outcome together. And so that's where that section kind of just clarifies again and again and again, like who you're inviting and why. Um, and then it's also just asking you about your goals as far as what you want to do and your time commitment of ability, like how much time do you want to commit to this space? How many people do you want to work with? Um, you know, is it a time frame? I found that like the mastermind 90 days was a good time frame for the mastermind because anytime after that you start to lose people, <laughs> um, unless they're like really interested, like Carol's shown up for a, over a year. <laughs> She's like super fan of, of mine, which I will love you forever, Ness, but, um, you, you know, <laughs> some people, you know, like we had, um, the 90 day mastermind and Annalisa has left cause she's moving. And, and Greg had been in, a, in our other mastermind, but he just had a baby. So that's wonderful and exciting, but busy at the same time. So life things just happen. But I find that that's, that's a good question to know. 
not only for you as a host, what's happening in your life? Because I had a, one of the clients I had, she was launching her community. First of all, when she reached out, she wanted to launch it in a week. And I'm like, give yourself at least a month. Second of all, then she, I realized, and she didn't tell me this until after we had built her course, but we spent two weeks building her course. And she was going on a trip to Hawaii for a week, two days before her opening. <laughs> so like she came back and then she was like opening up her course. And I feel like that is not really an ultimately good experience for her as the host, right? Because you're already like kind of like, I don't know, is everybody in there? You want to have time is basically, I'm going to sum, sum that up by saying, is you want to feel like you're not stressed. <laughs> So just knowing what's happening in your life, plus knowing what's happening in the lives of the people you're inviting so that you're giving them the space and time that they need to be able to really participate in whatever you're doing. Um, and so that's just what this worksheet kind of goes through is just like being more intentional about, um, about your launch and your opening and all that kind of stuff. And then I go into a little bit of detail, and this is where I show you the... Um, the calm flow. So we talked a little bit about this with um, Stacy's suggestion of, I don't want a question. I want um, you to tell me. <laughs> She's like, I want you to just to tell me what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and so with this, this, this calm flow is what I came up with. And it's basically just saying a statement. So I already have a course or a group that I'm ready to move to the money network. And you just agree or disagree. Yes, I already have somebody that I'm connecting with. Or no, I don't. Um, and then you maybe say, I want to create a live course for my members. And then you agree, yes, yes or no. I don't want to launch a course or group. I want my membership to be my offer with content included. So if that's the case, then that might be yours, Jeff. Um, you just want a membership that includes all the content, right? Everything is in the network. Like you're not telling them to go anywhere to a course or to a group. Everything is just the network is the space where you're hanging out. Then you would just, this is explained to you how you would set it up in the Mighty Network. Does that, is that something that seems helpful to, to you, Jeff? I, I know that you haven't really dug through Mighty Networks for a while, but. Yeah, I did. I went, I did go in there for a couple of minutes and, and just to see if I could refresh myself. And the only thing that, that I refreshed was the anxiety. And that's, <laughs> I immediately emailed you, literally. That, that, that was, that, those were the steps. Um, again, you know, I, 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 I'm very aware of what didn't happen and what I need to happen and, and, and the help I want and need. So yeah, that, that, this, this, this is cool. This is cool. I mean, I, I wanna, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you can dig into this more, but this is just an example of like, if you're not sure um, what step you want to do, like maybe you, you're, you know, you want to you know, you want to bring people together, but you're not exactly sure how, how to do that. This is kind of explaining to you. Well, here's some options. You can set your network up as a paid plan that has a monthly or annual payment so that membership is included and any other content was included in that membership. So for a host that has a goal of having, I want to have X amount of members that are paying monthly, that would be how they would set that up. That's based on the current situation that you have. You have a group of people, but you don't have course or any kind of instruction, and you're just bringing them together in the network. And your goal is to have reoccurring revenue. So the hosts, and then like what you actually have available. If you don't, have a group or things like that like maybe greg you know is like i don't know how this would make sense for me um you could actually use the other workflow that i'll show you to like decide um what you'd like to do first but this kind of i've been reworking this to try to make it a little bit more clear um, but these are the, the ways, instead of like taking questions from clients, I actually worked a client through this when she was not sure how to set up her network. And in two minutes, we already knew exactly what to do versus I've seen people take this, like this st step took them two months to, to like get clear. So that's the goal of the calm flow. And I'll probably work on improving these as I go, but I just wanted to kind of give you an overview on like the reason for that and then i do have another worksheet 
or sorry, that's the, that's the PDF. But I do have another worksheet that goes through all of the, oh, so then I have the next option. So then the next section is asking you again to clarify a little bit more about um, the payment plan. So based on previous lessons, the, the first two, two lessons went through a payment plan options um, either a one-time payment or the cohort, which is like the reoccurring membership. And then these are just examples of like how you would set this up. You would set up your network as a one-time payment if you were doing a course and that was your payment structure. And then I just go over the benefits. This would mean you would be focused on a, on a price for one course that will run once and needs to be priced based on your return, your revenue goals for the time. So if that's, if you're doing a course, your focus is the only thing you care about is to get a price that makes sense for you with knowing how many people you're going to be able to convert to that course. And that's kind of where the worksheet goes into breaking out what's the structure for my first course, what am I teaching, what's the purpose, what are they going to benefit from it, what are the dates, how much time do I have to commit to a course and then the hours, and then you're looking at like how much I need to make profit-wise, and this is an example at the bottom that I go over that shows, okay, so for an example, I know 10 people that I wanna invite to my, into my course, let's say, and I estimate I'm gonna convert three to five members for this first course, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna reach out to these 10 people, whether it's a phone call or an email or a combination of those things. I'm gonna invite them to my course and say, hey, it kicks off June 1st or whatever the date is. Um, I need to make $500 for, from this five-week course to cover my expenses, and I want to make $500 in profit, so I need $1,000 of total revenue. That's my ultimate, my basic bottom line. I need to at least make $1,000. So that just means it's a, a numbers game at this point. So now I have to figure out, okay, I'll need to charge $350 for each course participant, at least $350, let's put it that way for each course participant, if I convert three students, hopefully more, that would give me at least um, 1,050 in revenue for the course launch, for that first launch, um, that I will share with my students as an introductory rate that I'm going to increase once I get through that first course, and then I'm gonna make improvements, and then the content will be even better, and then I'll have the price increased, for example, going forward. Does everybody kind of like get what I'm trying to do there? Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I wanna, this can get in the weeds. I can get in the weeds so easy and I'm trying to stay like out of the weeds and trying to stay like right in the, this is how it's gonna help you directly to your, to your point of wanting to make revenue and how you set it up. Um, and the second section is it's option B. So if you're not doing a course, like Jeff's not doing a course, so you would be doing an ongoing member payments model. So if you decided you're ready to, to like open your course or you, you wanna open your community as a paid space, then it's talking about the options that you have here to either a monthly or an annual. So you can offer these both at the same time. You could offer a monthly and an annual like with a discount where it says they'll save some kind of percent if they pay for the whole year. Um, you can have that reoccurring and that would be the network membership. And then they would get access to certain things, whatever is in that network would also be included in their, in their payment per month. I have another example here where I created a, a plan with the Calm Guide and the community membership. So. I have it as a higher rate because I'm gonna be charging for the Calm Guide separately. So it's gonna be like a course price. But if you pay for it with the membership, you get it at a discounted rate. So instead of saying, I'm gonna charge $4.97 for the course, this is where I lose people. So let me know if I need to slow down. Um, so instead of saying, I wanna charge $497 one time for the Calm Guide, I'm gonna say, well, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna give you a discount and you can get the Calm Guide instead of for $4.97, you can get it for $97 a month or $9.97 for the year. So you have a year access, basically, if you pay the $9.97 to this guide and this worksheet and these 
all the stuff that's included in the guide. Plus, you're in the community. So uh, if, for example, it takes you six months to build your community, which is totally great and OK, you have six months to go through this content. And as you guys know, <laughs> sometimes you're like, you need a need to revisit certain areas of your community or you need to like look at like okay how did i think this was gonna go after i did my first launch and now where am i at and how do i need to like re reorganize or reformat or, or or change something to restructure i just had a client yesterday on a strategy call that she's gotten a bunch of people in her community at the lower lower price rate but she wants to restructure because they're just not being active and she's just not seeing what the goals she has she has goals and she's just not meeting those goals so i'm going to help her with some restructuring during a strategy session but this is stuff you can if you for example with this example if you paid either the 97 or the 997 you'd have access to this over time so you could decide okay deb i only need two months to get through this content I'm going to be a member of your community for $97 for two months, and then I don't need your community anymore because I'm going to go and do my own thing. That's cool. That's great. But a lot of people <laughs> that I found, it, it just takes them time, and they really like to have a community of, uh, as we know, to, to share ideas and concepts with each other over time and what's worked and what's not worked. So they might likely stay in for five or six months or 10 months, or they might just say, I'm just gonna buy the year so that I don't have to rush and feel like I have to get everything done, you know, get through this whole course in a month. I know that I need, would need at least six months to get, do something like a course because I just, life is busy and I don't, you know what I mean? It just, if I have that access that I have it for longer than like the five weeks, it helps me feel like I have a little bit more calm because I can work through it at my own pace versus having to rush through something. So does that make sense to everybody, that structure? Does everybody understand that, what I'm explaining there? I see that work really well for people as far as somebody who wants to have a course but also wants to have a reoccurring payment. As long as you are connecting with those people throughout the lifetime or, or throughout when they're hanging out there because that's an easy way to also lose them because they might be one of those people that I'm just going to bust through all this content in a month so that I don't have to pay for another month. Um, and you don't want them to, and they probably wouldn't get the value out of it if they did that anyhow. So I think it's just in your messaging to your members, when you do this kind of a model, you want to make sure you're ensuring and telling them why they want to stay. <laughs> you know, like don't try to have them do the course as fast as they can. Tell them, take all the time you need because the longer they stay in and they're processing the content, the more you're making. But you can also do the what Carol did and what a lot of other people do is the one-time payment, that option too, if that's what you'd rather do. Um, and then this first section is just reviewing over what we went through, which is knowing at this point at the end of um, section one, you should know what your big purpose is, like who you're bringing together. It's just kind of a review of the Community Design Masterclass, because I know not everybody has taken that, so it's kind of my take on the Community Design Masterclass. Uh, I do see some messages in the chat here, I just see. This is a terrific resource. Thanks, Greg. I'm here tracking. Okay, Samir. How do you know what to charge? Do you have a sense of range of that exists across my network? So it's a good question, Greg. Um, I will address that. So in the beginning, when I say about the step one, it's really about identifying what you need versus what other people charge. And a lot of people take the stance of, well, what's everybody else doing? But I don't see that as being helpful. Now, you obviously want to know who your members are. If, if you're trying to market to um, unemployed fathers, but you want them to pay $100 a month, well, if they're unemployed, they're probably not going to be able to afford something that's, that's not a job like they're not you know if you're not paying them or if they don't have if this isn't a priority of theirs they might not be able to afford that for example but if you're working with executives or people that are very busy and they're in sales or marketing or they're in some kind of another um, industry where it's it's you know imperative that they 
prioritize whatever you're teaching or working with them, then they will be willing to pay that much because they know they need to invest in it because it's a priority of theirs. So the pricing just comes down to knowing who you're bringing in like really knowing your ideal members. And that comes from the ideal member interviews and discovery interviews you do in the very first part of community. And I actually am gonna do a whole nother guide that's just on discovery and ideal member interviews because I think that that foundation is lost for a lot of people or they, they maybe do like maybe two or three when I feel like it's much more helpful to do like 10 or 15 or maybe even 20, depending on what your you know, if you're clear, if you're really clear with 10, then that's great. But like sometimes people need a little bit more to understand their ideal members a little bit more. But this is assuming you've already done your ideal member interviews. You already know um, who your members are, who your ideal members are. You kind of have an idea, a sense of like what's affordable for them. And then in the beginning, you ask them. <laughs> you just say, you know, like here's what this course is gonna cost. and if they're really interested in it, they're going to be like, sure, sounds great, whatever that price is, because they're interested in really wanting to support you and they need whatever you're helping them with. Like, it's a super important thing for them. Just like Greg, you're in a location indie. So there's a good example. So I'm in location indie and I met Greg through location indie. And it's a community for people trying to leave a nine to five corporate life and become location independent so they can travel or do any whatever they want. I live remote like I live in an apartment so I have a an apartment but I travel right I can I don't have to like ask somebody <laughs> to have two weeks off which is what I had to do in my corporate life right um, so those are just like but that community helped me a lot with like transitioning and because of those people and they were in that community I paid the $49 a month for the last three and a half years because A, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> B, I think that the community is super helpful and it's a positive um, thing when you see other people being really successful in their online businesses. And I'm like, oh, if they can do it, I should be able to do it. So all of these things relate to like retention of keeping people there, of creating, not just having, creating the content as a host, but also having the members create content and collaborate with each other, which is when the magic starts to happen. But Location Indie is three and a half, four years old, and it's just now that they're really seeing the, that uptick in creation of content from members. It's been about two, three years where they've really, and they have a full-time community manager. So, they're, and they have 300, 250 or 300 members. So, um, I forget where I was going with that. Pricing. But they knew their but they knew their audience enough to know what was going to be affordable for those people and that and what they needed bottom line to make to make it at least jason when i interviewed jason on the podcast jason moore who is the host of location indie he said well we're not making a lot of money it's not their primary revenue source but they're not in the red they're able to cover their expenses so community even for somebody who's been doing it for four years still isn't making them you know, millions of dollars or anything or lots of money it's just it's, it's simply another way for them to connect and help people and that's how they see it as hosts um i'm gonna stop samir did you want to ask you have a question on three questions on your punch list you want to clarify yeah do you hear me? Yeah, I do. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I went through the through the whole um, class, you know. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> and I can see how fluid it is. There's some things are overlapping or repetitive or all of that, but you got to kind of fly with it, you know, and just kind of keep going and writing down whatever I think I need and and I guess I'm learning I'm not never going to have a full sense of control of this. It's all going to be uh, like a cat moving around, uh, <laughs> you know, in some way. <laughs> uh, and as long as they're happy and things are moving along, great. So, but then there is a couple of things that I couldn't figure out. So one of them was um, I want to invite people. I will start with a course. So there's six weeks of course. And then six weeks after the course would be sort of a regular membership for them to experience it. 
after those 12 weeks, I will offer them, do you want to continue this? Uh, here's how much it's going to be per month. Uh, but for that, for those 12 weeks, they will pay one price, which will be for the course and a free three months membership. So mm -hmm. they'll know that they'll hear word free membership. So they know the membership will cost later sort of thing. So when, when they pay and it, let's say my course starts uh, on October 12th and two weeks before they sign up and they come into the membership and now they're waiting for two weeks for the course to start, right? And I don't know of any other way except, you know, I can, I can fill the time, I can en enroll them, you know, I can do all kinds of onboarding and, and get them kind of pumped up for the course. But if I sell a course a month, month and a half before, what happens then? How can I, if somebody says yes today, today, that they want to join my course, and, and my landing page is ready and they pay, they are immediately going to membership. There is no pause for them. Yeah, there's no holding pattern. Like you, It's not like you can put them in a waiting room somewhere. Is that what you're saying? Right, right. Because yeah. they are ready to pay and I need to tell them, look, you will pay a month and a half from now. Right. You know, that's very painful to do <laughs> because when once you come to yes, and then you tell them, you know, we'll be in touch. It's kind of hard. So is there any way around that? I get into this a little bit at section four, I think, when I'm talking about launching. Did you get, you said you went through all of it? And yeah, in you were talking four. about soft launch that people come in. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be ready for them until two weeks before. But that's okay. So you could still invite people in. I think when I was talking, it might be in section three, but I talk about the welcome post and the like the big purpose or our purpose post as being like really the only content you need in, in the beginning to just start with just like if you're onboarding those those two are really the only thing you need. And then a welcome party of like a virtual event saying, Welcome to everybody. And that can be your onboarding strategy where you're welcoming them on during a live event. And you could have that two weeks before your course starts or a week before your course starts. That's what I'm going to do. Yes. The, the event yeah. is within those two weeks. Right. So in the meantime, you can just um, schedule. You could schedule some things to tell them to do or or you could schedule some posts if you've done that before. Have you done scheduling before? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm scheduling events and stuff. Yeah, I can. Well, I even mean for content that you could actually like schedule oh. questions that that maybe to prepare them or maybe if there's I know Carol has some prerequisite things that she so, recommends. So like maybe even like an intro um, post where you're saying getting them ready and maybe that's either physically they have to do something or maybe just emotionally they're doing something. Mm -hmm. So those could be something where you could have some kind of content in there, but it's not like the course. Mm -hmm. It's like a bridge between them coming in and them starting. And then maybe there's like a, you know, either a welcome a post that you create. I don't know. Is that helpful? Yes. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's, I can think about that uh, because they will, their expectations needs to be managed, you know, properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Okay. That's, that's one thing. When you talk about welcome and purpose posts, there's one welcome and purpose when they join membership and another one when they join the course. Yeah. And every time they join something, there's another welcome and there's another purpose post. And okay. I'm feeling I sometimes I'm frustrated on Mighty Networks that there's so many things flying in all directions. There's no like a systemic way and I'm re reading same thing twice or three times in a different ways. So what is your suggestion? In my case, uh, I would have a welcome and purpose. And then when they join the course, what would I what would I need to offer them for the course in terms of welcome and purpose? Nothing or something or when we went to section one and we were talking, or I think it's section two, where you created the door, um, how are they coming in? They're coming to the landing page and they have only one offer there, which is a bundle of course and three months free membership. And I said okay. membership is free and the course for 245. 
and then okay. after three months I'll see. Okay. So they're coming in with the as a paid plan, but it's a paid free plan. It's a bundle and they get access to the community and the course that you're doing. Right. And in that situation, you you could stipulate a welcome that says what the community is about overall. Okay, uh, Jeff, no worries. Take Thank care. You. Thanks for joining us for a little bit. I'll talk to you soon. Um, and then the the welcome for the community would just be explaining what the overall community is. And what I typically try to do is customize that course welcome specifically for what you're going to do with the time frame of the course. Now, if you have multiple places, I would not like continue doing all these welcome posts for all of the places. I would say for a course, you would want to have like any dates that are, are relevant to the course in the okay. welcome and customizing it for like what they're actually doing in that area versus how is that different than what they're doing in the um, yeah, community. Yeah, so you want to repeat the values, repeat the, you know, desirable behaviors, <laughs> all of that stuff. You don't have to repeat that, right? Right, you know, right, because okay. think about it in this, and I'll share, just to give you an example. I did a welcome for the guide, right? And I explain who this guide is for, but this doesn't talk about the Fine Kong here community. This is just talking about what specifically you get from the guide, what we're doing here. And I also do have a place where I say, if you're new to our space, and I just actually updated this a little bit ago, um, if there, if you, maybe you weren't a member to find calm here and you joined because you joined through the calm guide, right? So you didn't know about the fun calm here community. Like you didn't come in the doorway that each one of you came through. You came through the calm guide. And so then they're like, oh, well, there's all this other stuff that I can connect with. Oh, there's fun calm here community events. So I have a link and this hyperlinks over to the events. So that's a way for you to bridge between what the mm -hmm. community is doing and what the course is doing, but also keeping it like separate so that people are understanding, oh, well, this is the course versus, oh, this is the community. Okay, I get it. Thanks so much. And a third question is, um, I set up the bundle with the course and the membership. And then I, when I go back to the course, my course is set on private. Mm -hmm. And when I click paid, it says, oh, you want to create a bundle. And it offers me and goes completely in a bundle that is empty, but I already have created a bundle. You know what I mean? At the beginning, first I create a bundle of the course and membership. Then I go to the course and I go into the settings. And in the settings, it's set as private. When I click on paid, why is it set on private? And when I click on paid, it asks me to create a bundle, new, completely new bundle. So in the general settings of your, of your course. Right. And if you go down here and it says privacy. Yes. And you have it as paid here. No, it's set on private. Okay. So why do you have it on private? Because when I click paid, it jumps into, you have to create a bundle. That's the next page. There's nothing I can do. Uh, it, it is just forcing me to create a bundle and I don't want to create it and if I don't create it I go back it's back on private okay if I click paid it'll tell me uh -huh. you have to create a bundle right now and if I say I don't want to and I go back to the course it's back on private you should be able to say yes because did you create a plan you have to have a plan for the course did you create a plan just yes for the I course? created that already so I don't need another one yeah, I don't know why it says that then. You should be able to just say, you should be able to just say, to toggle it over to paid. Um, okay. Do you want to share your screen and just show me? Uh, okay, why don't you go ahead? Uh, I don't want to hold up the time and then I will, when I'm ready, I'll. I'll okay, we can set I'll, up a time I'll that I can just, message. we can just review, maybe jump on a Zoom call and just go over those settings to just see what that's about. Yeah, or, because the, or, that's, la or later during the session, but just keep going. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does there any more questions that you had? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Does um, Jessica welcome? Thank you for joining us. Um, did anybody have any questions um, as far as what we talked about so far? I want to make sure I'm addressing any. 
Samir, I know you went through the whole thing. Did you find that it was helpful? Like, was you said there was some re repetition, but was there anything that you saw that that um, that you were confused about? No, no, it was really, really great. I mean, you know, you keep going back to your uh, to the purpose and 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 yeah, no, it it was just great. So I'm looking forward to the onboarding piece. Okay. Okay, yeah, and I do have little videos with that, um, and they're just really, most of them are really short, so I um, wanted to go over, so we went through this, this first section, and then the sec second section was about creating that doorway, and that's really just talking about what we just were discussing, if it's a paid, a private, and that's where a bunch of um, people get a little confused too. Um, and that's why I have like a breakout section there where it talks about the doorway. And so the doorway, oh, Jessica, no worries. Yeah. That's okay. If you wanted to type anything in the messenger, I can definitely address any questions you have if you're not able to get on the, on the um, video or even if you wanted to, un you could just unmute or dial in if that's helpful too. Um, for sure. The, um, let me go back over here. The next section I was going to look at is, so we did the doorways. We talked about the paid and the, did anybody have questions on the paid, the private, um, or the public doorways that I mentioned? Everybody, I think, knows what that means. I mean, Greg probably doesn't, but in general, um, okay, let me just review real quick because I didn't really go over section two a whole lot. So let me do that. I'm gonna mute you, Samir, just because there is some audio coming back oh, on your sure. end. Um, okay, so everybody can see, yeah, my screen. The um, select your door, it just really talks about how you wanna invite them in and that's more about um, if you want people to peek in to your network without them joining, that's the public. If you want nobody to be able to join, like they have to request access, then that's the private. And then the paid version, you can have a free paid, which is kind of the confusing language with many networks, but a paid plan just means that you're gonna create bundles or have some kinds of multiple offers. It's not just a network membership, there's gonna be other things included although you could have a paid just network membership. Um, and so this kind of breaks down each one and it gives examples. So the first one I show an example for is the Mindful Living Collective. That is a private money network. Um, they have like a questions that they ask you and you request to join. Um, but that's the, the doorway is the request to join button with this main landing page. And then I go over some pros and cons. Um, you know, they have to be approved. There's a little bit of a um, not really great system of approval, like person has to request it and then the host has to go and approve it and then the member gets another email saying that, you know, now they're in, but sometimes that email gets lost or it's in junk and that's kind of confusing. Um, I always recommend not to do this one just because of all those things there is going to be some updates with the new spaces models that are coming available in the fall but until then we're not going to worry about that um so that's why i focus on these different sections so that's the private is just like you have to request to access it is a little clunky clunky of a onboarding but if you wanted to have a private space and you're connecting specific people like uh one of the people i worked with had 12 people that she wanted to bring from another group onto her money network. And in that case, all you do is you customize the invitation and you actually put their email addresses in and then it goes right to that person and then they come right in with, they, they get through that whole approval process. It, like you don't even use the approval process when you have a private network, when you're inviting them directly. So that's kind of like a workaround for some people who, you know, want to have a private network, but you know, want to eliminate that disconnect of sending them to the landing page where they have to request access. 
Um, and then the public network is, is like the Muddy Hosts is what the example I give. So the Muddy Hosts is a public Muddy network. Anybody can look in. You just can't comment unless you're a member. So you can't like ask a question or comment on anybody's posts unless you join. Um, the main benefit to this is if you're a business and you wanted a free space, um, to market or promote or, you know, have just that doorway that sometimes they talk about. Um, and if you want SEO, it does help with like building your SEO, connecting your brand with the Mighty Network. Um, so that sometimes is important to people. And so those are just key points that I mentioned in this guide. <coughs> I do have a slide deck, by the way, if anybody wants this slide deck, I posted it in, in the community and um, on the email that I sent out earlier today of all of the sections. Um, I share some pros again and cons with that public. I, I te te tend to not recommend the, the pr pr public if you've got like a sensitive topics, you know, if like, because some people might not want their comments seen by the public. <laughs> so, Jessica. Um, De yeah, Deb, I was, um, I actually tried to access the slide deck earlier and I was having some trouble with that. I'll try again and I'll let you know if I keep having Yeah, trouble. I think I had to change it to, I thought I oh. set it to, um, to go in there to go hold on i'm just going to do that now so i don't forget okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah yeah i thought i made it like accessible to everybody but i probably only made it it's for certain for access i do it all the time <laughs> let's see drive launching thanks for mentioning that um uh Share. You're very welcome. All right. Anyone with link? Copy link. I'm going to put the link in the chat just to make sure. And you let me know. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. This is where we're. So we went over like the beginning. The um, first, the first, um, or the second page here, after the initial slide, is the work, the flow of the entire guide. So um, the first section is setting up your network. The second section is easy access, and that's just talking about these private versus public versus um, paid bundle access areas, and that's really to create a good user experience. And so the, what I mainly focus on in section two is talking about. How do you want your members to enter this door? How, what's going to make it easy for you, and what's going to make it easy for them? Um, so that's that's kind of the foundation of what we talk about with like the door and getting in. Um, Samir, I can cr make you the um, make you a co-host if you did want to share this, since we can answer this question maybe for you while we're on this call. And I know it's two o'clock, and I do have this going till three. So if anybody else needs to pop off, no worries. Great. Um, so you want me to share screen, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here you go. All right. So so here is if I go. Um, this is the course. Uh, so the way I set it up, I will have a lot of events uh, for six weeks. Uh, you know, one course and then Q and A, and then after each one is done, I'll put it on the course material. Um, afterwards and kind of build a course for those who haven't been able to make it live. So that's the course. Then when I go to the course settings here, yeah, course settings, uh, I go to uh, general, privacy and invites, and, and it goes on a privacy here, it says private, see? Mm -hmm. When I click on paid, is what says, create a plan. Well, it's saying that you don't have a plan this, to make a miss. But I do. Navigate the plan. <laughs> so go to OK. OK, so, that I'll, and then, okay, so I'll show you the plan. That and then let's go I, to. I anticipated this is going to <clears throat> go back to network. So here's the network. And here's the network settings. And I go to uh, payments. payments. Yeah and plans mm -hmm. 
and the plan is here mystic space course that's the course we were in and three months membership that's it mm -hmm. uh, and um it's on a hidden now mm. but so that's 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 the one and then if i go on settings uh, i have a um, yeah, you have to have something visible. If you have a paid money network, one of the plans has to be visible. So whether it's the bundle or um, the membership plan, one of them has to be visible. Okay, so let's make this one. Paid. Yeah, and there there is something that's that's changing that setting then to paid. That's what that just did. I think. Okay. All right. Hey, problem solved. And then go back over to your well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident this is going to work now. Uh, I'll cancel. Fade. Let's see. You might have to go to save or refresh it. No. Still says that um, Mystic yeah. Space mm -hmm. course paid. Navigate to. Okay. So go to paid and say create a plan. Yeah. So when I go to create a plan, it gives so, me a completely new. Um, right. Do you have an external or an internal plan? External. So. The bundle that. Okay, okay let me plan. go let me go back external mystic okay so. here it is and um wow this was still on a hidden you have to save it too i think that's the thing is yeah if, yeah if we didn't, you don't i guess we didn't um i don't think we saved it uh and then it, save. And it said okay it says now it's now visible say okay and then go to share if you create a share link did you already do that okay it says visible here so now mm -hmm. in the top right right so sometimes these get so time consuming to figure this out i'm all over the place in the searching their help and um so i appreciate that See, it still says you don't have a plan for this course. Do you have more than one course? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious as to like... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm thinking no, that... No, it's only one course, so... Let me go back over to plans. Let's look at each plan. To my plans? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to all the plans that you have set up. Let's just review all the plans. So you have three external plans right now. You've got one that's deactivated that was a bundle. You have one that's hidden that's an external network membership that's a recurring, you've got a subscription there. And then you've got one that's a one-time payment. And that one-time payment one yeah. is for the course and the community. But that Mystic Turn community is the one you need you need to have a one just for the membership, like just to be a, have access to the network. Does that make sense? Oh, I see, I see. It actually, the one on the top, it excluded the, the, the mystic turn because oh. it wants me to, um, I get it. So it has to be one for membership, one for the course, and then, uh, one bundle and that bundle must be visible and then everything will fall in place i believe so yeah i can see in the first I... one it was it was membership plus course and now the course disappeared mm. but, yeah for some reason um yeah okay. and you can go into settings i think or details and you can look at what's included so here it says membership to mystic turn yeah, and then, doesn't... so that's just the single one, not the bundle. What's happened now here? Okay. Yeah, I, I think, you know, right now, um, you cannot delete it. You can just kind of uh, 
retired. The, plan, the plans just get deactivated. Yeah, you don't. Nah, so there's no gonna, way to make them go away. So I will. I will go from scratch and create because right now here I cannot. Um, I don't see how can I add anything. You can change some of the details, but you can't change a price. So if you need to change a price or the, I don't even, can you click on that membership two section? Membership? Like down at the bottom. Oh, here? Yeah. yeah, can you click on that at all? When I click on that, it takes me to the membership. It just takes you to the membership, okay. Yeah, yeah you might just have to um, create a, so a create a new plan for the membership, which mm -hmm. is free. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yes, that, uh, well, I am right. Or I can charge it 97, but in the bundle it will be, you know, mm -hmm. free. Right, so you'd have to have a free m network. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ha have it free. I'm going to have it for $97 a month, and then in the bundle I will just price it one-time payment. So let me just go back a little bit. The... Mm -hmm. The limitations of Money Network as of today, you can't do both things, right? In the beginning of section one, I talk about you either have to choose a reoccurring payment or a one-time payment. You can't do both at the same time for, you can, but it'll get really confusing and it's multiple plans. So what I recommend is that for your example that you're charging one payment, so you're charging uh -huh. the 245, is you have a free network and you're charging for this specific course I at see. the end of that time frame you're going to give them the option if they want to stay here or not mm. yeah, and so if I they can don't... create the membership for free and the monthly two two different plans right and then i can just uh include the, anyone yeah this I'm is not... getting a it's getting a oh, little uh, sure sure okay i will i uh, will rework this and then i'll get back to you if i have yeah, let's see if we can go online with some of this offline, like on a different call with sure. some of this, because Thanks. I want to like dig into it a little bit more. But I will, I do want to show you the example that I can show you on mine. So let me, I'll have you stop sharing and I will share um, my screen to show you kind of what I'm talking about. So, and this is where a lot of people get confused, so don't worry. Um, I've gotten myself confused with this too a lot. I have a lot of plans, you can see. <laughs> I've played around a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can see. Um, but I have, so I have an internal plan and external, so I have internal plans and external plans. And so when you have, for example, the, um, the calm guide to structuring your, your um, money network is the one that we're talking about today. And that I have as a free right now. The price I have, I create a free plan for this. And so later I'd have to create a paid plan. So I had showed in one of the examples that- Sorry, Deb. quick Go question. Ahead. Was it yeah. a free internal? Or um, no, this so is external, isn't it? That was, a, a, an, that was an internal guide to structuring your Mighty Network, yeah, because okay. it was for members of the Fine Calm Here community. Okay. So technically, you. you're welcome. So technically, when you have a resource like a anything other than network membership, either a group or a course, um, that setting is in the manage of that specific part. And when you're talking about, you could actually have this be a public, and that just means, a public just means that everybody will have access to it. Everybody who's in my network is gonna have access to it. Um, versus a private, is, which is where you invite people to this resource. Um, and then the paid is where I create a free plan, but even, I didn't even have to create a free plan, I could just leave it as a public until I decided to close it. Do you know what I'm saying? So like later at the end of the month or next month, sometime, I'm gonna make a decision um, and I'm gonna close this resource. So everybody who's in there now, if you're a member of this, this guide right now, you have lifetime access. But after August 1st or whatever day I decide, um, People who join the Fun Come Here community after that date will not have access for free. They will pay a certain 
like one time payment to get the course. Okay. But that plan doesn't need to be created until I decide to like make it paid. Okay. This is if helpful. That Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? I mean, um, it's been really helpful just to listen, even listening to you helps in your, I think I, did I say your name right? I'm so sorry. I, I can't see everyone right now. Very good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. Now I see you. Okay. Um, so it was even really helpful for me just to listen to you talking to Samir because um, the actually the questions I have have more to do with like understanding how to use an email list with your Mighty Network and do we need to do that? I'm, I'm juggling trying to figure that part out, um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Day, I'm guessing so, <laughs> so that's I can okay hold that for another time <laughs> well it does really in a sense of in the beginning of this overview I talk about who this is for and it's really for people who don't have an email list or a social media following this structure that I'm teaching in this space in the calm guide because it's assuming that you don't have a big network of people we talk a lot about a small group and how you in the first step in step one, it's it's really about like, who are you inviting? It's like writing out the names of the people. Like, who are you inviting? Who are the specific people I'm inviting to my community? If you have an email list, you might know the people on your email list and you might not know the people on your email list. So it's a different, it's a different situation. If you, do you have an email list? Sorry, I got, I got kicked out. No, I, I actually don't, but I, I want to start building one and um, we chose to use our Mighty Network landing pages like our main page and I realized there's like no way for me to, like, I'm not sure how to like add that, add the ability for someone to sign up just to be on our email list. Um, I mean, we're going to have like, we have a chapter of a book we're going to share for free. Like we're, we have like an incentive for people to sign up, but, but I'm not sure how to get that done and uh, yeah, anyway, and that's and I'm not necessarily asking for that today, but uh, that's, no. that's the, like a big question that I've had on my mind lately. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. And that's actually going to be what we're discussing in the other guide. So the onboarding oh. guide is, is going to actually go over. There's an entire section in the um, in the onboarding guide that I just launched. Um, I went over this with people in our Mighty Mastermind last um, last Friday. Mm -hmm. And I only have one section up so far. The first section is about creating an onboarding plan. The The second one is about um, getting your members to connect, which is going to be up uh, in a couple weeks, and then um, cultivating growth um, yes. through my network. But in okay. the first section, we talk a little bit more about um, creating your onboarding plan and this structure of like maybe um, a checklist of like who you're going to invite. And so I have some checklists in here of um, who you're onboarding, what your best um, method for these are, and we describe what different methods of onboarding are. And part of that is an email list. So one of the methods that we discuss in, um, I think it's um, selecting your onboarding method, step two, is we talk about different ways to onboard. And one is a video walkthrough, and that's basically where you're like, um, recording a video and you're saying, you know, go to the left navigation bar and click on resources and that's how you'll get to the guide. Um, and then there's an orientation packet where, you know, you actually have like a yeah. PDF of, of somebody who likes to, and I kind of explained about who, like maybe it's good for like visual people or people who are logical learners. They want like an orientation packet versus like somebody <laughs> yep. who wants to actually get in and do it. And so a live event, like a welcome party is a really good um, onboarding strategy for those learn by doing people. But what you're talking about is basically like even getting people to your, to your landing page. And that's more about marketing and, yeah. um, and, and really getting your, like people to know who you are in the first place. Yeah. Um, and so we are doing a marketing workshop with, um, a friend of mine, Mary Green, and she's going to come talk to us. I think I signed up. Uh, next Wednesday, July 21st is our, um, our, is our marketing workshop with Mary. And she's gonna talk about some of this stuff. Um, 
I'm going to go over email templates in, in that onboarding plan too. I do have some, just to like, not to get too off track here, but just to let you know that I do have a replay of the workshop I did with the Mighty Mastermind from last Friday that that's on there. Awesome. Okay. I don't know why it's taking so long to look. And then in step five, ah, where'd it go? Why, why, why? Why is it telling me my step five isn't there? <gasps> Where'd my step five go? Okay, that's weird. All right, we will have to look at this <laughs> later. Now I'm freaked out about it. Because I... I mean, one thing it. that I heard I could do, uh, or I thought of doing is, you know, setting up like a subdomain um, that will just have, it'll be like another landing page that's just, that I can link to that's just, uh, it contains the um, the form for, for, you know, giving us their email information and, um, but yeah, I've been trying to figure out how to get that on my landing page and, and I haven't I, been able to yet. I can help you with that. The, the thing of it is when we're talking about a community, emails are emails and, and it's great to have an email list. I want to cultivate an email list. I think they're important, but I also think if you're trying to build a community and that's the number one goal, emails are not going to be the way. Agreed. Um, yeah, so I think it's a combination of a couple of things. Yeah. It depends on your email um, carrier. I just changed my email carrier. In the other, one more thing I'll tell you about is the <laughs> other the other event. We've got a million events in July, by the way. I'm like <laughs> overkilling everything because I want you to stay and learn. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna have another one that's a tech and strategy. Uh, t um, sorry, tech integration, and that's gonna okay. talk about emails. So okay. we will be discussing in, in, a, in a couple different other events about emails. Um, cool. I think it's important and I think there's ways to cultivate your community through emails. Yeah. But I think you have to have, in the guide that we're discussing today, it's really just the foundations of like how you really just put together a community in the fastest, simplest way so that you can get people in your space, in the money network, connecting and collaborating and talking to each other. Um, yep. That's really like the, the main, and that's hopefully what everybody gets from the guy that's the, my intention of, of, of putting this guide together. And I think one of the reasons I thought of doing this to begin with is because, um, so I currently just have the community plan and I don't think I have access to, I'm, I'm trying to navigate and figure out like, how do I, I think we can message members, but I don't think that we, I don't know. I guess I haven't understood yet, like how we can contact people who might be interested. Um, I don't. I don't know. Like maybe they signed up for free, and um, and then they dropped out once it came to. They signed up maybe for like a free trial, and then maybe they dropped off once the free trial came up. Like, I I don't think I can access their information to try to. Um, offer them other opportunities or or even like a one-on-one -on -one conversation and, and try to talk with them i don't i don't know i'm trying to um bye carol no worries <laughs> um jessica so just to get a little clarity on what you're doing so i can make sure i help answer the question the best i can sure um how are you bringing people in or inviting them in is there a trial period or, or you know like a free trial yeah so right now we've we've got a, a live workshop we're doing in august so we've been out like speaking at conferences and stuff and and inviting people at these conferences to um to sign up and then they get two two months with with that um and so we've mostly been either doing one-on-one -on -one inviting um or we've been at conferences you know just talking about it and uh sharing um sharing the opportunity so we don't we only have i think one person signed up so far but we only started like last week <laughs> so so i feel pretty good about that actually um <laughs> congratulations uh, oh thanks um but yeah so w right now it's it's just doing it like that um and um, I don't want to put a lot of emphasis on the email and at the same time, I wouldn't mind um, using it as a, a tool for people who maybe they're not quite there right now, 
but reminding them that we're there for when they're ready. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so that's what I want to mostly use it for. So understanding that's not going to be our main tool, but it will be something that's like, like I have a couple emails that I follow and I'm, and I'm not ready to like take their workshops or join in this, in a couple of cases, it's Mighty Networks communities. I'm not ready to join their community, but I appreciate seeing the emails come up. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's that's what I was, does that make, does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, I did not even, I was, I can tell you from, from my experience, I struggled a lot with email and, and, and how it connected with the Money Network in the very beginning. And I only started, um, I changed my email provider in the past three months and I restructured the way I'm doing emails. And that's basically based on other people's templates that I've like copied yeah. from other people and have seen like, okay, this seems to work or the emails that I'm getting from other Money Networks um, that, that I'm kind of pulling together what they're doing and like kind of trying trying different things um, and because I'm pulling my email list from people that I had discovery calls with like as soon as I have a discovery call with somebody they get on my email list um, mm -hmm. if I have any past clients that they're on there and so some people in different stages of their and I have it connected to my business for example so I have not just about the community but I'm starting to expand now and not even just talk about the podcast so initially I had a focus on events for the emails and I was promoting like the speaker on the emails. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I changed from that to events focus, which is I did 30 events last year with Find Calm Here community until I did my restructuring in January. So then um, my email list, I changed it to a different platform that's more mobile friendly. But then now my, and in the beginning it was just about my podcast because the only thing I had, I didn't have anything else figured out in January about what I was doing to restructure. So I just had the podcast. So I was sharing that in the email list for a while. And for a while I just stopped emailing people because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not sending out messages to people when I don't even know <laughs> what I'm doing. So I really wanted to get yeah. a really better strategy with emails. So I feel like it's something that's in the very beginning of your community building process, it's not super important. Um, if the if the goal is to get people into this space by mm -hmm. August for the workshop. Yeah. yeah, well, I guess that wasn't actually, that's not my email goal. My, my email goal, like, I, I don't even need to like rush with that, I feel like except that I'd like, I'd like a place where if people are like, eh, not quite yet, but I'm interested, I'll give you my email address. <laughs> Let me download this chapter of your book and I'll give you my email address and that, you know, for now. And so my goal for the email is a little bit more, um, you know, I guess it, it's beyond August 7th. It like for between, between now and August 7th, we are just gonna continue doing what we're doing, reaching out one-on-one -on -one, and doing, um, and you know, speaking at any conferences or workshops and sharing about it there. Um, but what email provider so my do you goal use? Then is, um, well, what what um, I just went through my Namecheap, um, so it's just private email, is the, and then uh, uh, ConvertKit was the, um, whatever email marketing platform that we chose but we're so new in it that i would change it i could easily change it because we have no we have no emails right now besides the people we know personally <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i would say um once you decide i switched i had convert it and i switched to send in blue and i can go offline in another call and we can sure. chat more about email um questions and sure. yeah um Oh, this comes up a lot with a lot of people, but for our focus in, in FindCom here, I'm typically more focused on the community aspect and how we invite people to the Money Network and then what we're doing with them in the yes. Money Network. And that sometimes has a little bit to do with email, but I don't so much focus on like yeah. the email strategy, which is why I have some other um, events that'll talk more about that. But like for right that, now, I wouldn't even worry about it. If your focus yeah. is like focusing on the people that you already are, either you've got a strategy for like, getting people in the community and um, you have a strategy for like what you're going to do in August. Yep. Um, and so like you can put the whole other thing on the back burner because you're going to learn so much with that first workshop that it's, yeah. it's almost like I, I wouldn't want, if I could go back and tell myself one thing, it would be like, don't worry about all that stuff. 
worry about what's right in front of you today, right this moment, versus trying to think about 30, 60, and 90 days. I want to have a oh. vision and a goal, right? I want to yeah. have like, okay, I'd like to have X amount of members and I want to do this thing. Let's say I did a 90 day, for example, I had a 90 day mastermind. I invited specific people into that 90 day mastermind who was on the call earlier, Carol and mm -hmm. um, Annalisa and Ani and uh, Joanne. They were all in the 90 day mighty mastermind. We started in January we decided on structure. Like we met every, every two weeks, we decided on the, um, the way we're going to connect with each other and how we're going to work inside the masterminds. And mm -hmm. then at the end of the time period, then they had the choice on whether or not they wanted to continue and they decided they wanted to meet monthly. And so mm -hmm. that at that in January, I was going to use that as a beta test to then offer a mastermind as a paid offering. Uh -huh. But my ideas about what I wanted to do with my money network changed four to, four to five times in that 90 days. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because I cool. didn't. In the beginning, I didn't have super clarity or understand my ideal member, but through that 90 days when I was working with other Money Network hosts and through clients that I met in the time period as well, I better understood who my ideal member is. I better understood what they need. And even in the last few months, as we're talking, I just created the calm guide based on feedback, which I didn't have that before I opened the Money Network up, my Find Calm Here community as a paid space. I had mm -hmm. certain amounts of content, but I didn't have a lot of content in Find Calm Here. It was just like what I had been doing with the Money Mastermind, which was like five people. So literally I had like five people in my Money Network before I started to open it up. And then I did a soft launch, which is what I talk about in that, um, in the calm guide to launching, I talk about a soft where you're reaching out to people you, you know, like, you know, personally, whether it's, you know, that they struggle with whatever the problem is that you're trying to help them solve. And you're doing the concierge onboarding, boarding, which we talk about in the onboarding method of, um, you know, you're calling them, like you're saying, you're, you're having mm -hmm. a call with them, whether you set up a Calendly and you invite them to schedule a call with you, or you're just having a phone call with them. Um, but you're telling them, you know, here's what we're going to do. Are you interested? And then, you know, this is what the investment is and, and what you're personally inviting those people into that space. You learn so much in that first process that probably whatever you thought you were going to do six months later or three months later is going to change. <laughs> like that's helpful. I'm going to say a hundred. I could almost bet a hundred dollars that the things that you're thinking about now are going to be completely different after you first invite those people in and whatever August you said, I guess, yeah. like 30 Thank days you. after that. That's super helpful. And also it was super helpful for you to hear you say earlier, like knowing your audience and knowing, like setting your price, knowing what, what they can afford. Like that is so different than other things that I've heard. Um, and it's really helpful to know because we have my partner and I on, I'm, so I'm working on sort of working on two communities, really actively working on one. The other one's on the back burner for now. But um, mm -hmm. my partner and I were really worried because a lot of the people that, like we know how much we could charge for this if, um, you know, if we were able to get what what it's really, really um, worth uh, with how, how much experience the two of us have. And at the same time, we also know who we're trying to market this to. Does they do not have that money? And, and so um, we have, you know, we've worked really hard to find something that we felt like was reasonable. And also, you know, we felt, we felt like we were still valued as <laughs> professionals knowing what That's we know. Key. Yeah. Um, it's the balance. It's the balance of like, you don't want to give it all away. You want to charge what it, what you need to cover you um, with the intent of like probably increasing it later, having an introductory rate and then, yeah, or just like I offered my or other so, offerings. Yeah. Or other offerings. Like I did the mastermind for free in January and I didn't intend to do that. My intention was to pay for it, but I couldn't get paid members in December. I thought mm -hmm. I had been working with consulting clients, then telling them, them telling me that they wanted something like this. And then I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to offer. And then when it came down to it, the people I were, was talking to at the time were like just not ready. They were like, well, I yeah. can't invest. 
I think I was going to charge like $500 for the three months. And even that was like, ah, I just don't have that much money. And so mm -hmm. a lot of money network hosts, uh, you know, they've already invested a certain amount with like the community design masterclass and with other places. So, to, uh, you know, there's people that are like, well, I don't know. It depends. Like, it really depends. There's, I've yeah. had a client that I booked. She booked a strategy session with me. I have three people that recently that I booked a strategy session on that discovery call. We got it and they paid me the invoice within like two hours. Like we did a proposal, she got wow. the invoice, she paid it. And then on our Friday strategy session, she's already booking another strategy session for the following Monday because she's like, okay, I know you're gonna help me, hook me up, like I need you. <laughs> so, yes. so she's like already locking in like that other strategy session on the Friday call for Monday because she knew she wanted to be prepared for her date to open up the community um, the following week. And so we worked it out that she could do that. But but some people are like not, they're just not ready to throw down a bunch of, you know, even 200, my, my strategy session is um, 297, it's for two hours. And, and I found that to be a really good middle ground because I had been charging more and I had been charging less, but I feel like that's a really solid where I feel comfortable Mm -hmm. that I'm okay with that time commitment and the what I I know what I'm with offering one person. And, yeah with one person and I know what I'm offering with that person is going to like to everybody I've worked with on a strategy session has been like blown away in 15 minutes and they've told me that they're like you can't believe I was stuck on this one part for, for like two weeks <laughs> and and like so if I can help somebody in just like 15 minutes that it was something they've been stuck with that's worth it to me and I'm getting compensated in a way that's appropriate and awesome. I'm probably saving them a lot of time and energy you also have to consider the amount of time and energy it took me to learn all of what I learn and so mm -hmm. then when people I've had people nickel and dime me about certain things and I'm like that's fine if if you don't if you can't afford this then that's that's okay then that's why i created other options that's why i opened up the community at a lower price point that's why i'm mm -hmm. offering these other opportunities to have some kind of access with me and i'm creating these guides that are um evergreen right well not yeah. maybe, maybe not necessarily evergreen but they're like um you can do them in your own time because they're all like yeah. i've recorded some videos and it's just kind of like you can everything is open so you can just pop into whatever section you need and that's awesome. basically to help me and you because i can help more people my goal is to help more people without me having to be doing a one-on-one -on -one call all the time with people because yeah i'm hoping i get to a <laughs> point at some point where i have to limit my calendar because i will be having lots of clients um that's still yeah well that's still a work in progress right now so but I think that's what I've been learning is really just focus on what's right in front of you because honestly, it'll just change. It's just gonna change. Like everything is gonna change the second you start working with people. Even in the past two months, I'm deciding now, I didn't have content before, but now I have content and I have a lot of stuff. I have like almost excessively a lot to me and I'm trying to like slow it down. Although my brain's working a mile mm -hmm. miles a second of like all these things I wanna create. But at the same time, I was on a call with Sandra, who's in the Fine Calm Here community, and she goes, well, I'm glad you're not creating all of this at once because we can't consume it all at the same time. <laughs> and you have to really think about, I, I was on a call with a, with a client yesterday that booked a discovery or a session with me after a discovery call, during her discovery call. And she said, you know, that's so true. Like, as a person that's like taking courses, I need A, time to take a course. And B, like, I just can't be rushed through it. And sometimes my life is just really busy. And I, so if somebody's putting out a post every day, every day, every day, I'm like, dude, that's too much. Like, like I can't handle yeah, coming into yeah. like even every like community, the community every day. Yeah. Well, even the community design masterclass, I couldn't keep up. And I think that the assignments were great and it was, I, I enjoyed all of the sessions. I even attended some of the office hours. I enjoyed those, but um it was it was tough for me i mean even now like i'm doing this while i'm taking a lunch break because i'm i'm a public employee and i have to be super careful about how i use my time for this um versus you know so i'm trying to do this just like a lot of people i'm sure are trying to do this on some nights and weekends and um and lunch hours 
That's what she said, too. She's working for four days, 10 hours a day. And she's like, so there's no way I could, like, talk to you on these days. She's going to say I'm available these days. Yeah. And so that's that's great. Um, and it's it's I've been doing what I'm doing full time for a year. And it's like. I don't even know, like when I was at a full-time job, it would have been really hard for me to tackle all of this stuff and be as far as I am now. There was no way. It just would not have been physically possible. Um, so I think it's just knowing your, again, it's like knowing what time you have and what commitment level. That's what we talk about in this guide in the beginning of this section is just how much time do you really have? What do you really want? Like, what is really going to light you up and make you excited to want to show up to this stuff? Because if it's not fun for you, A, mm -hmm. that sucks. <laughs> and B, mm -hmm. you want it to be fun for you so that you're bringing that, that energy to the group or to your sessions or to whatever is in the community. And so I automatically feel like it just should be fun and easy for you. And so whatever you're doing, getting to a place where it's fun and easy for you. And maybe that means you just have one call a month with your group. Maybe that mm -hmm. just means you have one post a week. Like mm -hmm. that could be, it could, that it could be that, that low of an engagement because you're not so worried about all of this activity happening more about mm -hmm. how do I help people in a deeper, more intentional way versus yes. trying to throw all this content at the wall and see what sticks. Those are yep. two different philosophies on how to mm -hmm. do things in the community. And I'll tell you, throwing things against the wall hasn't worked for me. I've tried, been there, yeah. done that. So that doesn't really work. And asking people in the very beginning, like on that welcome call, I told another client on the welcome call, when you invite people in the first call you have, ask them, like, how much time do you guys have? Like, do you want to get together every week? Is that helpful? Mm. Or is it like once a month? Is it helpful? Um, you know, what is, what is working for your schedules? And ask, just ask them in these live calls and get feedback from them. Um, and that's same with the content, just being like, so I posted a thing and, you know, just mentioned something that I created a post. Has everybody seen it? Is it interesting to you? Is there mm -hmm. topics that you're interested in? Like if you can follow the topics that you're interested in so I know that I'll focus my time and energy putting content within those topics versus like maybe there's something that nobody really cares about. But I, as a host, thought it was super important. But then I asked members of the community, and they're like, eh, eh not really. Then I'm like, it's oh, okay. <laughs> cool. That's great because now yeah. it's something I don't have to worry about. <laughs> no, yep. it's one less yep. thing for me to do. Versus, versus, and all, and automatically giving them content that they want because then you're refocusing on this is what's really important to them, and so not only yeah. then did you give them that time and flexibility, but you also are giving them what they're asking for. Thank. This is this is super helpful. We um, we really were starting from from scratch. I mean, we know our stuff, and we like we have this idea of like putting putting some things putting a couple of different things together, my expertise, her expertise, um, putting that together. Um, and, um, but we're like, okay, well, we, we have an idea of who our audience is, but we don't really know. And that's why we started speaking at conferences that were related to that topic. And um, just two days ago, we were able to collect like nine email addresses from people. So I guess I do have an email list, but <laughs> We were able to collect nine email addresses from people who are like, I want to know more. Oh my gosh, this is great. And they're like, please tell us about your workshop. Cause we didn't, we just had like a slide that had our workshop on it. And they're like, no, please send us the link. And I'm like, okay, that's great. So this is definitely a group that's kind of hungry for what we're trying to do and uh, would appreciate that. So now I finally have a list of people besides like the one or two people that I already knew about. I finally have like a list of people that I can ask the ideal member questions to um, rather than just the one or two people who happen to be my friends also. So <laughs> um, anyway, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of babbling now. I'll stop. Sorry. Samir, you've been <laughs> listening uh, for a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm good. This is all good conversation, you know, cause it's, um, it's it's basically that's what it is about i mean you need i feel like that we can double down on this conversation it's most helpful to us because that's in the name mm -hmm. it's basically calm down 
Mm-hmm. All down, people. <laughs> I did. W- yeah, I did want to mention um, in step two of the um, of the guide here. We talk about launching, but it also goes into uh, tools. And so I do talk about using a Google Calendar for like time management and then keeping track of your progress in these different platforms if you do use them or if that's familiar or what's helpful for you. Um, but I do want to mention in the beginning of when I um, started, I actually just used my Gmail instead of an email provider. Like I didn't have an email provider right away. Um, and I just created, if you use Gmail, there's ways for you to create tags and you can just create a tag for whatever the group is. Like I had one for my members, like I have a find calm here tag for all the members of find calm here. I have a client tag for like all the people that I've worked with. Where's my contacts. Contacts. So you go to contacts, you can actually look at all the contacts you have and you can create labels is what they're called. And then every time you send an email, you can just put in that like label. Like if I wanted to message all the Find Calm Here members, I could just put in the in the email. It should work that way. Fine. I had no Calm idea here. that you could basically use Gmail as like a, it's not uh-huh. like a, full on contact management system, but at least like that level of organization is not something I had any idea Gmail could do. (laughs) Yeah. And it's been super helpful for me because then I sort out like, and then I could, I had three and four groups at a time that I was leading and it was getting really confusing to communicate with them. But I was, that's how I was, I ended up managing it so that I created these different tags. And then I just emailed those set for people. And I even actually discovered a whole new other thing, which is cool that I started to use, which is templates. So you could actually create templates and I have a a template new calm guide. So this is something I send to like, um, maybe clients that I worked with in the past that I just email a couple clients and say, this is a new offering that I have if I'm calm here and I can put specific people or I can just, you know, put that group of clients, consulting clients, and then that list all of those people there. Right. And then this, this, this template is already a copy that I wrote. So if you wanted to, let's say, invite people or you want to notify different groups of people, you can create even templates to use. So that's something I would, I would say that that was a workaround for you to not worry about at all, Mm -hmm. (laughs) any kind of email system, because what happens in that is you get all kinds of levels of wormholes with email Mm -hmm. sequencing. And there's just a lot that goes into that stuff. And I'm still working on figuring that out. I had it figured out kind of for ConvertKit, but then I left ConvertKit and now I have Send in Blue, And now I have to learn all that stuff over again because it's a different <laughs> platform. And I've been, it's on my schedule this next two weeks to work on that, to learn about a little bit more about email sequencing as an onboarding strategy mm-hmm. um, and to capture those leads that might, like if I had a discovery call with somebody and never converted them to a client, and then I want to actually invite them to the Find Calm Here community. I want to have a sequence that's set up so that when mm-hmm. they do a discovery call with me, they get an invitation to the Find Calm Here community. But then what I also want to do is have them, when they join the Find Calm Here community, they get another email that says, welcome to the Find Calm Here community, create your profile. Those are like less, to me, they're a little less personal, but they also are something that you can run in the background mm-hmm. so that you're not manually like, Hey, Deb, yeah. I'm so excited you joined the Find Calm Here community. Could you go in and create your profile? That would be great. Um, you know, I think to, what, to all the people. In the future, and like you said, maybe in the future, this is going to change because of learning from your first class. But in the future, like when we have, we're planning right now a six-week class. Um, right now, we're just offering like the one-off. Um, we're going to do that probably three, four times a year, the, the little one-off workshop. Um, with the two months of the community, but the six week class will be different. And um, what I'd like to do is um, develop email sequencing for, for people in that class so that we don't have to like 
because we're going to be busy enough. <laughs> we don't have to then, you know, think about, oh, what email do we want to send them this week? Because we already did it and it's going out automatically to the people in that group. So that would be a few, another future use for, for the um, email stuff. So. Yeah, that goes uh, uh, back to this uh, the end the at the end of section uh, section four actually is about kind of identifying and I give you my use case and I talk I walk mm -hmm. you through exactly what I did last year I launched the Come Here community it took me about six months six months to try to figure out like and make it and figure out what I was doing um, and I first invited the people in as a beta group in the ninety day mastermind. Um, in January, that was my intention. And then this is based on the feedback I got from people in the mastermind group when we did a what's called a growth seat where I shared what my launch plan was for Find Calm Here, in this case, my relaunch plan for Find Calm Here. Um, I developed that relaunch plan based on feedback from my members in my mastermind. So everything that I'm doing now was has been in the works since since basically January. And mm -hmm. then this is where I like got clarity to, and I understood, and these were the structures of my mastermind. So uh, this is what we did through each, each step. And then when I had my growth seat, I walk you through everything I did. And then I share mm -hmm. with you my actual launch plan. And what I want to point out to you in this is I don't do everything in one week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally expanded it from April until June 20th. So two months I gave myself to like, mm -hmm start doing little by little little things creating a marketing marketing copy writing up setting up the new plan that i want to have to charge people to come in my money network i had to reach out to the there was members in the fine come here community because it was free before mm -hmm. this and so i had to reach out to those people and say here's what we're doing i'm redoing this you get two months to decide whether or not you want to stay mm -hmm. and i told them what's what's going on what they're going to get most of them were money network hosts but they were maybe busy with their community or doing something else. Mm -hmm. And so um, I said, you know, if you're too busy, no worries, I will like remove you. And so that's what I ended up doing is I removed the people who just weren't interested in staying. The people that the core group of people who were in my mighty mastermind who helped me with the structure, I grandfathered them in. So they have lifetime access to find calm here because they helped me with all of this clarity and getting to where I'm at now. Um, and then just as I'm doing again, for the guide, you, you're all getting the guide for free. Whereas mm -hmm. when I get a little bit more understanding and making sure that, that I'm hitting the nail on the head with this, this guide, I want to go out and ask people to pay for it. And that's the plan, but I'm not asking people to pay for it. Now I'm saying, help me kind of get it to where it needs to be, or at least somewhat mm -hmm. needs to be. And then I can like restructure and re-update it when it needs to be. But I did everything in stages is really what I wanted to just mm -hmm. Like just imagining like giving yourself time and space. So like, yeah, there's going to be something, but you can have the emails and you can put them mm -hmm. all on a spreadsheet and you don't need to do anything with them today. Mm -hmm. And you can save them and you have them somewhere, whether it's a Google spreadsheet or whatever you use. Um, and then when you set aside a week and you say, okay, July 30th is that week is going to be the week that I'm going to work on the first email for my community, or I'm going to identify the provider, or I'm going to learn about, I'm going to take a convert kit workshop and that's all yeah. I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> to like alleviate I love that. that having to do everything all right now. Um, yeah. because that's what'll drive, that's what drive, drove me crazy last year is I was trying to do all the things and uh, it's just, it's just really, it's just really stressful. It just really causes so much stress when it's not necessary and it wasn't even really important and nobody cares about my landing page or my website necessarily, you know, like nobody yeah. cares about all of these little details that I think like, oh my gosh, I have to like. So I paid a graphic designer last year to redo my website. I had an email, like literally like put together an email list on ConvertKit, started writing up emails. I had a, a four hour virtual summit where I recruited 15 speakers. I learned Crowdcast. I, I mean, I just did so much wow. stuff. Was it, was wow. it necessary? Absolutely not. But yeah. that's what I try to help people with now is like just what is really necessary and, and let go of everything else. Because I think the industry right now, um, 
is telling people that they need all of this crap that they just mm. don't need and it's cost money and it costs time and it gives you stress and anxiety and none of that means money in your bank account yeah. necessarily no I, I thank you for saying all that because i'm so i took the i i took the um the class through my new networks and mm-hmm. i loved it i i completely believe in I believe in Mighty Networks. Like, I think this is a good thing and I love it. And also um, there's a, an element of some of what you just talked about. Like, there's all these things that even they say you need to do, like with the the landing page. I mean, they're pretty cool about it. Like, th- they're not saying like, do that before you launch anything. They're not saying that at all. But that's, it, it felt, made me feel like that. And I'm lucky, you know, part of what we're doing um, involves a lot, literally a lot of uh, improv and my partner is even more like relaxed than I am when it comes to this stuff. And so she's like, no, let's just pick a date for our workshop. And then just like, everything will fall into place from that. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. She's like, you, what did she say to me once? She, um, She's like, you, you may, she's like, I think you learned a lot of great stuff, but you also may have ruined yourself a little bit by taking that class. <laughs> She's like, you can just, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow what anyone tells you. (laughs) Mm. But I think partly for me too, I'm, I'm trying to do this in an incredibly limited amount of time. And so I'm like, um, I'm trying to just take the best advice that I can and start moving forward with that advice. But honestly, I'm, I wasn't for a while taking, I wasn't thinking about whether that advice was right for me or whether that advice was right for what we're trying to do. So, yeah. Good. Cool. I am going to just, uh, we're going to re- we're going to recap here with the next calm guide. Uh, I am going to have the mighty mastermind. I opened up to anybody who wants to join in the fine. So if you're already in the fine calm here community, you can join the mighty mastermind. We meet monthly. And what I'm doing is basically I'm beta testing. I'm doing what kind of like this with this guide with the with the onboarding guide with mighty mastermind people so we did section one creating your onboarding plan last friday next um, month next august and we meet on the second friday of every month at noon eastern time and um, next month is going to be connecting your members to spark conversation and so i have i have an outline of what we're going to talk about in there um i don't think i have it up yet but I do have an outline for that. And then the next month, so that's August, so then September, we'll talk about like growth and um, creating uh, growth for your money network, which is talking about like ambassador programs, inviting people, um, getting people to talk about your, your network and, and uh, all that good stuff and growing your membership. So those are the what's coming kind of thing. Um, in addition to what I mentioned about earlier, which is the tech integration, which is going to take me a little bit longer to build out, but the tech integration, I'm going to have a little workshop on the 22nd of July. So next Thursday. Um, Mm -hmm. And we're just going to be, it's more of a conversation about these different software that you can use to integrate with my networks and why you would want to use them or why not. Um, and I have listed things that I'm familiar with here. And if there's other things that you have questions about, you can list them um, in the comments here and I can add any others that we wanna review over. If there's something that's working really well for somebody, then they can share like, here's what I'm using that's working really well for me. That's kind of what this is gonna be, but eventually I'll put together a guide like the ones that we just went through. That's gonna be like a more of a step-by-step. This is just like kind of a, to get some more information from other people to understand what everybody's using and sharing and answering questions about what I've done. Because I've used Trello, I use Trello, I've used Asana, I use Bonsai, I, I've used ConvertKit, I now use Sun and Blue. Um, I just discovered Workflowy from a client that I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect for what I'm doing. Um, and so that's really cool. And then like we talked about Google, how to like organize your contacts and be a little bit more strategic in um, your community data and understanding a lot of people you know the money network owns all the stuff whatever's on there is the money networks so if you don't have it saved somewhere else and money networks decides to just like go away 
that you lose that stuff. So the problem there is I always recommend people to have their contacts, their email lists, their, you know, if it's course material, you have that backed up somewhere that you can access at all times. So that way, if anything happens with your, with money networks or anything happens there, you have that backed up somewhere so that you don't need to worry about it. If money networks goes away, you're cool because you've already got like your email list, your content, you've got that um, to an extent somewhere, you know. Oh, you're muted, Jessica. So don't necessarily create all of your contact within Mighty Networks. Make sure you even, like if you want to reuse or repackage any of it ever, you should probably just have a, have a, like a, at least a Google doc that has your content in it. <laughs> I'll show you a little bit of Workflowy, which is how I organize. I learned about this work and it is a paid, I don't, it's not very expensive, but it's like a, I was using Google Docs to like mm -hmm. as an organizational system. And so I was using yeah. one main document and then having links to everything else there. But I had to go to like that main document and then like look through things. This is like a, a bullet system. So mm -hmm. I have different bullets of different things that I can then expand and I can link to stuff in here. So it's a little bit quicker to get to stuff like I have logins this is here great. I have um, for developing an SOP like like basically just things that I like I have my business plan that I just haven't done yet there um like my branding colors I kept like having to like dig through wherever I saved my branding colors and so this is like okay all my branding colors are here now so I know where they are so when I need them they're there that kind of thing. Um, all my social media links, I have that linked there. Deb, how is that different from Trello? And use both this and Trello? So I use this for organizing data. So think about any documents like I have. Um, I have like a bunch of affiliate links. So I have those all listed here. This is more data uh, organization. I see. Trello Trello is a project management software. And so I can show you my Trello page real quick. And I used, I have limited my Trello because I now use an app called Bonsai. And so that's a whole nother animal, which I won't go into, but um, it solves a lot more of my problems than Trello did. But um, Trello I use for my podcast because A, it's visual and I like this visual idea. And so this is how I, I project manage my podcast. So I have a section where, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Trello at all, Jessica? No? Yeah, we use um, Trello for, I use Trello um, oh, okay. frequently-ish. Yeah, I mean, I don't use it for community anymore. I did have a board where I had um, community on here, but mm -hmm. it, it, became, it became repetitive for me and yeah. I was doing things so fast that it wasn't making sense for me in there. That's yeah. why I now have this. And then I have the other app called Bonsai, and that helps me uh, project manage and task manage and created a content management system for me. And it creates invoicing and it does proposals and it does, and it does billing. So it does like that whole package, which is why I went to Bonsai um, for everything. Cause then it has my contacts. Plus it has um, like, I can set up and tag myself to like remind myself um, I can schedule things to go like I can schedule an invoice for like the 30th or something and like if I'm going to be away like I was away on the 30th last month um, and I, ne I needed to send an email or an invoice to a client because I bill them monthly and so I wasn't here to like press the button on, ju on June 30th but I didn't have to be because I just scheduled the invoice to go. How, that's this, great bonsai how, how does bonsai help you with content management that's what is missing on Trello mm. how does bonsai help you do that so I have in the in my this is called workflowy and we'll go into this in that workshop more for sure I don't want to mm -hmm. spend too much time anymore and hold you guys as because we've been on here for a while but I will show <laughs> you um, in here I'm trying to remember where it's at now I have in my community section I have content ideas so these are all ideas of things I want to either write about, blog about, create posts about, that kind of thing. Um, 
like these are email templates I want to do and this is like a resource that I have to like look at something. So these are all ways that I like manage it, but then to schedule it, is that what you're talking about? To like schedule the actual No, no, the I'm content doing? management, the, the how do you you have a snippets of ideas and you need to put them in the blog post and then you want to write in a chapter in the book later, but then you have a note related to that note and it's just managing of your ideas and minds for writing. Yeah, that... time time for time, like just for example, for time, I have these things, these tasks. And so I create tasks for myself. This is bonsai. And so I'll say, um, is my... I see. Okay. So I have like a different writing, client actually. and then I have a system in here where I create assignments for myself. And so I say, okay, like do tomorrow is like these worksheets and these templates. So those are my tasks for myself that I wanted to work mm -hmm. on. And that's kind of how I create the content for FindCom here is I basically strategize it out of what do I need to do in this next two weeks? And then I put those into a calendar and then I say, mm -hmm. okay, on like this week, I'm going to work on these, creating these, these things. And then I actually go over to the community and I can actually schedule out content. So when you're talking about scheduling, you can actually schedule posts. And so I have posts scheduled that will come out at a later date. And so I'm not ahead of it right now. I'm behind, <laughs> but sometimes I have a bunch of posts that are already pre-scheduled <laughs> pre that you'll see here. Um, and I do have also the drafts. So if I have an idea about something, then I'll write a draft and that'll like be saved in my drafts. And then I can come back to that and like update that later. So those are different ways to like in a different, so I write them in a list, like a bulleted list of ideas. So it's like brain dumping. And then when I have the idea or that I make that time on my calendar that I'm gonna work on like an email sequence. Mm -hmm. And then I put that email sequence together, then it's another on my, it's another, you know, then it's like a scheduled in my mm. task yeah. list. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the only thing I would mention with Trello is that it helps me with the project management of my podcast because I got really, I started to book a lot of people on the podcast and then I got a little overwhelmed with like, I had a whole bunch of people. Mm. So I had like six people or eight people that were already scheduled and it's a weekly podcast. And so now it's like, you're talking eight and 12 weeks out. So this wow. is a way for me to organize the, the flow of my production of the podcast. So I have, here are the people that are scheduled, um, here are the people that, that need their podcasts or have been recorded and they need to be edited. And then I have like a section for like reminding myself I need to create an email and I need to create a post in FindCom here. And then I have buffer for my social media scheduling. Mm -hmm. And so then it goes to like this, I just move these back and forth. And then I have all of the past people that have been on the podcast over mm -hmm. here. So if I needed to go back to that for any reason, then I have that listed there. Awesome. But that's how I use Trello for like, I use it mostly for my podcast now, yeah. less of, mm -hmm. less for my community. But I've seen a lot of people use this, especially in my launch. I use this uh, Trello in my launch a lot because it helps me to like identify what things I needed to work on at the time. Like mm -hmm. I needed and I created checklists and said, OK, I need to do a brain dump and things like that. Um, and ideas about community posts like I had checklists in here that I did stuff, but I was like ahead of myself all the time with this and it seemed like it was not but i like this is what i used to use and i linked it to like all of these different articles so i would have you know this is the article i want to write and i would have it linked to my trello board and then i would assign a date to it and say by this date i want to write this article and then this became a blog post on my blog love it Okay, I got to run, so thanks yeah, for, me too. for all of this. You're uh, welcome. Yeah. I'll post the replay up. I'm glad it's the help. The guide's helpful. Let me know what else I can do for you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you. We have a workshop tomorrow um, about getting published in Thrive, so maybe we'll see you for that, and if you can't make it, there will be a recording for that one. All right, thanks. Okay. I don't know Bye -bye. what that is, but I think I signed up for it.
I'm not sure if I can make it for sure though, but I'll That's I'll try. okay. There will be a recording, but we're basically going to go through a step-by-step -step on how to get published in Thrive, um, the publication, and it's a pretty well-known red publication and it's more about just getting what you're talking about getting people to know who you are marketing and promoting oh. your what you do um awesome. and it, you find um they have a list of articles that they're looking for people to write about and it's basically just picking something that's relevant to whatever it is you do and there's a lot of topics and then pitching and we're going to talk about how we pitch to the, the publication you write up a short 200 words and say here's why i i would be great to write about this basically and this is what i do awesome. and and then you pitch it to them and then they get back to you and then you can get in there and it's really easy is what joanne is telling me i haven't done it yet so we're gonna do, i'm gonna try it this is gonna be my first adventure i'm gonna be the test Ooh. subject tomorrow but um joanne says it's really easy and very um it gets it just helps you get your name out there as far as getting eyeballs to to go to your website or, or to learn more about you. Awesome. Thank you. This was really great. I'm glad that I was able to join for a little bit. So glad too. I miss your face. I haven't seen you for a while. So I'm so glad. I know. I, 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 I do what I can. That's why I sent you that message. Just I was trying to encourage you <laughs> to continue sending reminders because eventually I'll, I'll get there and I'll start joining. In fact, I was going to get a piece of feedback about the, the two months free. I think that was really great. And also I didn't have any incentive to, uh, like, I, I felt I, I didn't really engage at all until the, till it started to become paid. And now I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. So, um, I, I mean, I think it's a good thing. And also, um, I got lazy with it because I wasn't paying for it. So, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you. I'm actually changing it. So there's one month trial right now. Mm. And I'm going to mm -hmm. keep that for the month of July. And then starting in, I believe, my, let's, let's say I'm sticking to this. I am going to be changing it to paid starting August 1st. Awesome. So <laughs> there will be some investment needed. Because now there's tons of content. And now yep. there's amazing, there's more amazing new people that are bringing like more life to the community. Because there was a little bit of stagnancy. Um, over mm -hmm. the time period that the Muddy Mastermind people were not in there and talking. Mm -hmm. And so now that we have some new things going on and we have the book club and we have mm -hmm. all these different workshops and now the guides. Now, that, like, I didn't know I was going to create that stuff um, three months yeah. ago. That Like, that just came about in the last two months. So, again, it's just constantly, for me, I've just loved being able to constantly be learning about this. And I'm trying to also diversify my business from other people and, um, even now I'm like, you know, I was so hung up on sticking with the money network, but I think I'm pulling away from them because I just really want to help people build communities and it doesn't matter where you're mm -hmm. on what platform, because we're talking about, you can do st all, all the stuff that I talked about today. You could do it on mm -hmm. any platform. Mm -hmm. I mean, with the exception yeah. of the specifics to the, you know, the plans and stuff, but everything yeah. else is strategy. So, yeah. all right, we'll take care. Bye, Have everyone. a good day. We'll see you later.